Hi guys, this is Mick from Cyphertown.com and we're going to be talking again about the Alberti Cipher using Method 2. Uh, this is the second more secure method in which we are injecting numbers that are to be used for rotational commands of the inner disk. And uh, in a previous video, and in a long video I did on Method 2, we talk about um, insecurity with having the number values actually be the default values of that. If they find an entry into your cryptogram, they can pretty much then follow along by just doing what the numbers tell them to do to proceed through the cryptogram. And like I said, there's really only 24 possible positions to get a start here. So we need a way to secure this and make it more difficult. Now, one of the easy things we can do is we can have the numbers not truly mean what they appear to mean. In other words, 4 would not mean 4. 4 could mean something else. could mean a 5, could mean a 3, could mean a 1. And I suggested in another video this exact method where, for example, a tree, a 3 on the first occurrence would be a 2, and also on the second occurrence it would be 2, but then it would shift to a 5. And so this would throw off any type of crypt analysis who is looking at this crypt analyst. Another thing we can do is we can use a more advanced method, and that's what I have here on the right. Uh, I hope you can see this because it's kind of small, but I have the numbers 1 through 4 on the top. And I have all the letters on the outer disk, of which there are 20, written down on the left-hand side here. Now when we pre-process our password, in this case here, I'm using Red Wagon 9. Now of course, in the Alberti cipher we have no W, so I'm replacing the wagon with XX our digraph or W. And of course we don't have a full base 10 system so I'm using Roman numeral 9 for the 9. So this is in its most basic form our unencrypted message Red Wagon 9. Next I have injected rotational indications by number and uh, if you look at one of my other videos, you'll see how I do that. And I do that randomly with the help of two nifty dice. I'll just show you very quick here. Uh, you can notice uh, I have an R and then a 4. So how I got that was probably I rolled randomly. I got a 1 and then I got a 4 with these two nifty dice here. Uh, these dice have just numbers 1 through 4 on them. They're 12-sided. They're special game dice. And uh, by using this method here, I can inject the spacing and the number of the rotation or the number command for the rotation uh, randomly. So um, if we just go ahead and give you an example, we have a 2 and then a 3. So if I was writing this again, I would go RE, then I would add a 2. I'm sorry, I would, I would go over 2. The black tells me how many letters to go over. So I would go over to RE, and then I would add a 3. Okay? So I would put a 3 there, and then I would roll again. So we have a 1 and a 1, so then I would go over a D, you know, just one letter, go over the D, and then I would place a 1, and then I would roll again, and I would get a 3 and a 1, so I would then go over 3, which is W-A-G, and I would place a 1, and so on. So, you can see the last time I did this, uh, we came out with our, our first roll day a 1 and then a 4 and then I obviously rolled another 1 again then I got a 3 and then I rolled a 4 and got a 3. Uh, this is about the maximum size you'd like to have here because remember it's functioning as a monoalphabetic cipher when it's you know 
in this mode here, then it shifts again, and uh, we have one more shift here. Okay. Now, in the past and in the other videos, either this value was exactly what it meant, or it was perhaps some other value, usually a number. Things have changed over here. You can see this and focus in on this. Now, I have numbers and letters here. I have the numbers randomly 1 through 5, and I have the letters randomly any one of the 20 letters from the outer disk. So this changes things dramatically. Now how do we decide which ones we're going to choose? Well, we take the letter before and the number, and we simply look it up. So for example, the first one, we go R, all the way down to R, and then over 4, that gives an X. And you notice I have the X there. So once we get done writing R4, we're going to take our key, which for most uh, purposes we're here, I've always started off with the A over the K as our key. I would rotate it. I'll show you. So we start off, as usual, with the K, which is Alberti's favorite pointer, over the A. And so we write R4, which is Q, and then 4, which is G. Now, in the old method, we would rotate 4 over, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? But that's not what we're doing here with this method. What we do is we go R4, OK, we look over here, we look up the R, we go over to 4, it says X. So then we take our K, which is our pointer, and we put it under X. And now we continue with E, which is going to be a Y, and then a 3, which is going to be an R. Okay. Now we look up E3, E3, which is an R. And so we now take our pointer K to R. And now we continue with the translation, or with the encryption, I should say, for D, which will be M, and then for XX, which is going to be RR, and so on. And we'll continue right up to we get to A3. At one point, we will look up A3, which is a 2. Now, whenever we get a number, we're not going to put the pointer under the number. We're simply going to rotate to the right that amount, 1, 2. All right. So what we have here is two things going on. Either we're emphatically telling the pointer to go to a letter, if it's a letter, and if it's a number, then it's a progressive turn to the right, or you could even make a rule to the left. Now, this uh, simple chart I made over here is very easy to make. And surprise, surprise, again, I am making it with dice. And why dice? Because they are very random. So what I'm doing is I'm using uh, this dice here to it's 1 through 4 on a 12-sided dice, so uh, I'm just using it for even or odd. If it is odd, I write down a number. If it's even, I do a letter. So the first thing I would do would be to roll. That's a 4, so it's an even. So now I will take my 30-sided dice, which has the full alphabet on it, and I will roll it and I get a U. The U is not part of this alphabet, so I will go again, and we get a D. So now I will write down in the first box it, if I was doing it uh, a D, as you see here. Now I haven't done the last couple down the bottom here, so I'll go ahead and, and roll those. And we'll see how they work out. So that's a 3, so that's going to be a number because it's odd. And then I have these uh, D5 dice, which are actually conical 10-sided uh, dice with the numbers 1 through 5 twice on them. So I roll this, and I get a 1. And so I will simply take my blue pen, which is over here, and take the cap off it, and write a 1. Okay? 
these things really tend to dry out if you leave the cap on a cap, cap off for a while so that's one thing with dry erase pens you gotta watch out for so let's go ahead and uh, roll again because we have another X to do we have the fourth one to do it's a three so again it's going to be another number simply roll and it's a three so we're going to write down three so by doing this we get a very random chart which is what we have here I still have to do the zero but you get an idea what I'm doing there um, you can either use one of these 30 sided dice I forget the name of this thing it starts with try something or other um, try anchahedron something like that or you can use a d20 dice d20 works very well because there are 20 letters and you just have to put a little chart next to the letters to remind yourself uh, what letter is what and you could just roll and go okay that's letter 20 well we know that's z so in that case it would be a z you know so that's another way to generate uh, letters for you when you want to create random letters now this does not have to be your only chart you can have different ones of these which you can call the user to use the uh, codebook entry in other words you can start off your uh, cipher message with something like you know CB 41 and um, they will look up CB 4 codebook 41 and then they will go to that page and they will see this monstrosity now this type of thing uh, really makes the cipher much more difficult to solve in my opinion uh, I think it's enough to give most uh, cryptanalysts uh, kittens and uh, certainly brings it to a whole new level of complexity and security so that's what I wanted to share with you for tonight uh, there is one other thing we could do here to make it ultra secure and that would be to employ something called super encipherment either before or after we get a result here so uh, we'll cover that in another video and thanks for watching and I hope you're enjoying your Alberti cipher if you have one and if not maybe you can think about getting one it's a uh, Salentium Esorum on the top here which of course is silence is golden and uh, if you use this type of uh, methodology I think there's a pretty good chance that your communications written down in this fashion will remain silent from most prying eyes and certainly from any and all casual cryptographers so uh, thanks for watching again and have a good night